Hello everyone, this is a video to help support you with your computing tasks today based on computer coding. And today's task specifically is going to be all about creating an animated story on Scratch. First things first, we actually need to get onto Scratch. And just as a reminder to do that, all you need to do is go to any internet browser and type in the search bar Scratch. When it loads, it's the first program that comes up. As soon as you're on their website, all you need to do is click Start Creating. And there you have it. Now that you're on the Scratch program, you're able to start thinking about the story that you want to create. The story that you want to create today is about a time-travelling explorer who's going through different habitats in the Mesozoic era. Now, we started learning a little bit about biomes and habitats in our geography task from last week, so that might help you. For my example, I'm also going to do an explorer, but they're just going to be exploring habitats in our world today. Do I want my explorer to be this cat? Well, no, actually I don't. So I'm going to delete that sprite and choose a new sprite. I want to use a person because usually people are the explorers, and I think I'll choose Devon. Now that I have the sprite that I want, I need to choose the backdrop. This is one of the most important parts of our story animation today because we want to be looking at different habitats and the different habitats are going to be shown in this white space here. To do this, all I need to do is click the choose backdrop button at the bottom right. Now I'm going to choose the outdoor setting since different habitats are all found outdoors. There's loads of options to choose from here, but I think I'll start off with an Arctic habitat. Now that that's loaded on, I'm going to choose a second habitat. My character isn't just going to visit one place today, they're going to visit at least two. As you can see, when I've chosen this next backdrop, it looks like it's deleted the last one. But that's not true. If you look underneath the word backdrop, you can see the number three. That means we have three. If we click on the stage option and then click this other bo button up here where it says backdrops, you can see the three backdrops we have. I have my Arctic backdrop, my jungle backdrop, and I also have the white background, which I don't want, so I'm going to delete. I now have my character and my different settings, so I can begin coding. Now, the first thing I'm going to code today isn't Devon. It's not my character. I'm going to start by coding my backdrop, the different places that he visits. To do this, I keep on this backdrop stage button. Make sure you've got this highlighted. And then I click the button next to the backdrops up here where it says code. It'll look a lot like what we normally code, but there might be some slight differences. All I want to do is make sure that when an event happens, when I do something to change something in the animation, the background changes. Now to do this, I would go to the event button, which is in yellow. You'll recognise this section of buttons because normally we use the when green flag clicked button to start any of our codes. There's a slight difference today though. I want to be able to control when the backdrop changes. So instead of using the when flag clicked button, I'm going to use the when space key press button. Now I need to change what the backdrop looks like. To do this, I click looks and simply use the next backdrop button. Now, every time I press the space key, it should go to the next backdrop. We've completed our first bit of code. Unfortunately, that is the simple bit. The next thing we need to do is code the story as told by Devlin. To do this, we need to get off the backdrop setting. We shouldn't be clicked on the stage button anymore and instead click on Devon himself. Now that we clicked on Devon, you can see that the name of the second button has changed up here. It doesn't say backdrop, it says costumes, which means we're ready to code our character. I'm going to start how we normally start by going on the event section and using the when flag clicked button. Then I'm going to add a little bit of speech because Devon talking is going to create our narrative. To do this, I go to the look section and I click say hello for two seconds. I might also want him to say something else. If I use the same button again, I can change what's written in the box by clicking it, deleting it and writing my own message. It might also be a good plan to add in a wait button between the two bits of speech. Otherwise, it might be too fast for us to read. For a wait button, we have to go into the control section and then use the first button on the screen. Wait one second. 
Now, if Devin's exploring, he's not just going to stay in one place. You can code his movement in any way you want, but today I'm going to keep it simple for this video and I'm just going to make him walk a few steps. To do this, I'm going to make sure that Devin is at the side of the screen when he starts. I'm then going to go to the motion page and use the walk 10 steps button and add it at the bottom. Now, if he only walks 10 steps, he's not going to have walked far at all. That's a really small space in the context of the pixels that it will take for him to move. So let's up that. Maybe times it by 10. Maybe he should walk 100 steps. Now, when he's finished walking those 100 steps, we're going to code the most important part of our animation. The part of our animation where he considers what habitat he is in and asks the question to whoever's watching the animation. The kind of buttons we use to do this, you haven't looked at yet. So it's really important you watch this part of our tutorial. To create the interactive element to your story animation, we first need Devon to ask a question. To do this, we need to go onto the sensing option on our side coding options. When there, we need to use the ask button and drag it onto our code. Now, we don't want Devon to ask, what's your name? We want to ask, what habitat do you think this is? Perfect. Now, if you ask a question, you're going to have to give an answer. And this again, is going to use some blocks that we've not used before. First up, you need a type of control block. So go to the control block section and choose the if blank then option. This block allows you to choose a variable and give a consequence to that variable. So if something in the animation happens, then something else will happen too. In this case, we want to set it up that if the person who's watching the animation gets the correct answer, then something nice will happen. To set up the variable coding, we need two more buttons. The first is a type of operator or green button. We want to use the blank equals 50 button. If you look at it, you can see that the shape of this button is like a stretched version of the shape cut out of this piece here. If you click on it and drag it over the top, it should stretch and plop in. Now we need to go back to the sensing button and use the answer block. Again, if you look at the shape inside the green operator block and the shape of the answer block, you can see they sort of match up. So plop the answer block inside the first oval inside your operator. We've almost finished coding that variable now. We've asked the question, what habitat do you think this is? And we've set up if their answer equals something, then something else will happen. The final thing we need to do before we add in the consequence, the nice thing if they get it right, is make sure that it says the right answer. If the answer equals Arctic, then something nice will happen because it's correct. I wonder what nice thing we could set up for if they get the correct answer. Maybe a celebratory sound. Go to your sounds block like we did when we did our music mixing, get rid of the pop and add in a cheer. Now you can go to your sound block and choose the cheer until done button. Stick it inside the variable block and there you have it. They ask the question, what habitat do you think this is? And if the person watching answers Arctic, then it will play a cheer sound until it finishes cheering. The last thing we need to do for this part of our animation is tell the viewer how they can get to the next habitat. Now, when we coded our backdrop, we set it up that when the space key is pressed, it goes to the next backdrop. So now we need to tell our viewer that maybe by getting Devin to say it himself. To say something, again, we go back to the looks and we click the say for two seconds button. This time we want to make him say, click the space bar to get to the next habitat. You might also add in a wait button between the end of the cheer and him saying it, so it's easier for you to read it. And that's your first scene coded. All that's left to do now is code the next scene. To code the next scene, you do exactly the same set of code. The only thing that changes is instead of using the when flag clicked button, you go back to your event block and because it changes scene when the space key is pressed, you begin with a when space key pressed bar. It might also be useful to put a little bit of a wait after they've travelled, you know, to give them a bit of time to settle into their new habitat before they begin. And 
there we have it. Now we have everything that we need. Let's make it full screen and see how it works. And that's it. I'll just move him back to the beginning for if I wanted to play the animation again. Now, if you want to stop there, you can. If you want to do additional coding, maybe travel to yet another habitat. Maybe you want to add in some other characters. That's up to you. Either way, hopefully you have all the tools now. So happy coding. Good luck.